now we're going to have a look at the data preparation notebook. So in this notebook here, we have once again the same data set that we were using in the previous example, but now we're going to dive a little bit deeper into how to actually convert categorical data into numerical one-hot encoded data and also how to scale numerical values. So we're starting off by reading in all the libraries that we need to help prepare our data set. And here you can actually see now we're using sklearn. We're going to use the simple imputer, one hot encoder and minmax scalar. The remaining libraries are the same libraries that we've seen in the previous notebook. Once again, we start by loading in the data. So we're going to use the fork tables API we're going to specify the features to use and how to prepare our target column. We're going to limit the data set to California and 2018 as the year. And once again, we have our data set in front of us now. And you can see that there are a couple of missing values and we need to actually address those missing values. So when we have missing values in our data set, we actually need to either fill those values or remove the rows or columns that contain the missing values. So a machine learning model, if you think about it, it won't be able to make sense of a missing value. So we need to treat those specifically before we can actually train the model. Once again, here we have the split between the categorical and numerical features. And as we'll see later on in the preparation, we can treat those features differently. So for all of the categorical features that we have in our data set, we want to perform what is called one-hot encoding, where we're going to provide binary encoding for all the different categories. So for each instance in a categorical column, we're going to create a new column that indicates with zeros and ones, or yes or no, whether or not that particular instance is in any given row. The numerical columns, we want to scale those. So we'll have a look at how to perform a very simple scaling using MinMax Scalar later in the notebook. And here we just have the example of how to split the model features and the target. And this is just to make sure that the target does not end up in the set of features that we use to train the model. First thing that we want to do here is we want to deal with the missing values. And here actually it's already important to have the distinction between categorical and numerical data because we can use different methods to actually deal with the missing values depending on what the input data type is. So let's say we have a numerical column. Well, then we could fill the missing values with the mean of the column. So that would be one example. Obviously, the mean of categories, that wouldn't work. So in the case of categorical data, we actually need something different like the most frequent value or we could even create a category for missing itself and treat that as a category in its own regard. And here we're just checking how many missing values there are. It appears that there's only one particular column or one feature that actually has missing values. It's the GCL, grandparents living with grandchildren feature. So that's the one that we need to deal with. And as you can see here, we have one imputer for numerical, where the fill strategy is going to be to replace all the missing values with the mean of the column. And for categorical data, we're going to use a constant value with the fill value being missing. So here we're actually creating a category for missing values themselves. And then first we need to fit the imputer. So this is going to learn, if you think again back to the numerical example, there might be multiple numerical columns in the data set and each column would obviously have a different mean. So we want to use the fit method to find out what those means are. And then in the transform stage, which comes just below, we're actually going to apply the filling of the missing values. So here we have the transform. So now we're actually filling in the missing values now according to whatever criteria we found in the fit. And once again, we can check how many missing values there are. And now we can see that there are no missing values left. And one more thing that we want to do here is we want to quickly rename the columns. The names as they are currently, they're not super intuitive. So we actually want to use 
names that we can understand more easily. And the idea is that once we get to the bias mitigation stage or once we actually start grouping based on different attributes, it will be helpful to know what the columns refer to more easily without having to refer back to the metadata dictionary at all times. So here we're creating a dictionary with our own encoding and then we're going to apply this and rename the columns accordingly. And next we're going to deal with the categoricals. So even though in the data set there are already recorded instances in numerical format, each of those instances actually represents a different category. So what we want to do is we want to use one hot encoding to create new columns for every category or every instance that we have in any given column and then have the zero and one indicate whether or not that instance is in fact shown in any given row. And we're going to show this with the class of worker example here. So we can see that there are in total, if we scroll to the right, eight different classes of worker. And we're going to split those out. So every individual class now gets its own column with zeros and ones indicating which class any given individual actually belongs to. Same for educational attainment grandparents living with grandchildren. So all of the categorical features now, they have their own individual columns. So each instance now is represented in its own column with zeros and ones indicating which value the individual actually assumes. The final thing that we want to look at is scaling the numericals. And this is very important in machine learning because there are a lot of distance measures that actually depend on the scale of the data. So we need to always scale our data. And here we have an example of how to do that using the min-max scaler. And you can see here, we initialize the min-max scaler. And here we're going to take a shortcut instead of doing fit and transform in separate steps, we're going to combine both in one. Fit once again, that would be finding, let's say in this particular example of min-max scaler, it would find the minimum of any given numerical column, the maximum and so forth. And then the transform actually performs the operation of transforming and enacting the scaling. And we're going to do this on all the numerical features and we can have a look at the results down here. So we can now see that the age and the hours worked weekly in the past year and also the weight column that we have in this data set are now scaled.